Dueling Dialogues presents His and Hers with Grace Matthews, The Hammer, and Connor Murphy. Welcome to Episode 5 of His and Hers with Grace Matthews and The Hammer in the heart of the USA, Springfield, Missouri. Hi, you two. Hello. Hey, bud. What's going on? Not much. You guys uh, surviving over there? We are. I mean, it, it's kind of a cold May. Uh, March was warm. I mean, like really warm. We got all excited. We planted all the stuff. Now, April and May are like practically freezing. Yeah. This is our second year of it being really cold here, and I think we might be having a mini ice age or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Global That's warming, remember? Yeah, global warming, right. It's Yeah, I don't know where it's at, but it's not here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it is not here, but I will say that um, uh, we popped the top off the pool yesterday, and I can hardly move today. <laughs> That's hard go. work. But uh, we're hoping for warmer weather now. Good. Because normally that would happen about three weeks before now. But it couldn't because we're still dipping down into the 30s and the 40s that night. So. Yeah, I know. Crazy weather. Yes. So, um, thought for the de- for the week, I guess, kind of, because we do this once a week. Move the coffee table. It's so worth it. <laughs> Hammer and I, um, at the very beginning of quarantine, we moved yep. the coffee table, moved one of the chairs out of the living room, moved the coffee table over. We did it at first to practice dance, then suddenly we found ourselves doing yoga, meditation, uh, um, just about whatever you might think Walking, of. Walk, walking, walk, oh yeah, walk, 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 walk. walk. Oh. and you know, we have our, I have my own yoga routine that I've integrated with the hammer and it's worked out very well. He, Good. Is, he is getting tight. Right on. So, I'm not kidding, it is working. So Bring on the speedo. Are you still missing the gym, though? Uh, yeah, me- mentally I do, but, and I really hate to say this. <laughs> God, do I hate to say this. The results that I've gotten from doing the cardio and the yoga is much better than I've ever got at the gym. Wow. And I really hate to admit that. And now probably none of my friends at the gym will ever talk to me again. Well, the gym, the, the gym's kind of the guy thing for you, I know, though, right? I That's know, where yeah. you, go, you see your friends and stuff. Yeah, you know, that's where you tell your stories and all yeah. that stuff. And Yeah, I've heard all the stories. Yeah, so. that's the bad thing, you know. I don't have anybody here to lie to, you know, and fabricate <laughs> those old stories, you know. <laughs> Goes, but now, wasn't it that way? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah honey. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for running that one for me. But I do want to say, you know, thanks to your suggestion about you can find anything on YouTube. That's true. We have also used um, three people's videos that I, I would just like to know and point out. Leslie Sansoni, Walk, Walk, Walk. Okay. Try that chick's videos. It's free. Just get on YouTube. Uh, Jenny McClellan. Yeah. Uh, she has a lot of uh, just about everything. Yoga, cardio, weights. She's got some great videos. She's funny. She's um, um, she's real. I mean, she's, imperfect. She is imperfect and, and awesome. And then Legea Butler. Yep. She has some great, more traditional yoga moves. Uh, these are people, and I'm sure there's many more out there. Those are the ones we've used, and I, I just wanted to mention them because it, it's awesome. You don't have to go to a gym to be in shape. You don't even have to have that much room. Right. Um, right. You know, we got lots of places we could go in our house and have more room, but there is nothing more comforting than moving the coffee table over in our living room in front of the TV and, and just doing our thing. Even when we do our own yoga routine, we, we play meditation music, and um, it's it's an awesome thing to do. Yeah, just the meditation music uh, calms the, the, the nerves, I think. Oh, yeah, and it calms the dog, okay? Yeah. I mean, he it, it puts him in a trance like you wouldn't believe. 
Yeah, we have a uh, spa channel on our, our cable box. So I, I often put that, especially to sleep. Actually helps me Ooh. sleep within 30 Ooh. seconds. I'm out cold. Wow, I need that. Yeah, I am too, but... It Maybe really we should try that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, again, uh, everything's going great. We've we've had a, a lot of listeners, but I, I want to reiterate, why us? Why this subject? His and hers. His and hers, that's a big subject. We will cover a lot of territory. Right now, we're talking mostly about relationships and about quarantine and about the, the world, the new world, right. you know? Nothing's the same. And uh, why us? Because we're really bad at the entire concept of relationships. Okay? However, do. this is how we learn. Okay? Exactly. And we make mistakes, yet somehow we manage to have more good days than bad days. Yeah. When I told my ex that I was doing this show, she started laughing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> See, it, it can be done. Yes, yes. It, but she just found it really funny that I would be, uh, you know, some sort of relationship expert. But <laughs> none of this is coming from me. Yeah, I'm just we sitting here. Like to be any experts. Whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, the just, people that do it right, you know. I mean, I guess out, you know, out of the gate, and I know some of them. I really do. I know people that do it seamlessly. It's all uh, show. I, I it surely it is. <laughs> surely it is. But um, anyway, um, you know, Venus, Mars, male, female, yin, yang. You know, um, that's what we're talking about. Okay, and uh, you know, we want to be better people. So what today we're talking about? Um, we like to talk a lot about articles that appear in Psychology Today. Uh, this one's by Amy Morn, and, uh, you know, 13 things mentally strong people do. Okay. Or they don't do, excuse me. They, they don't. don't do. Okay. You know, and we're going to see what, you know, what we think. Um, number one, they don't waste time feeling sorry for themselves. Yeah. I mean, I mean, are you a person that feels sorry for yourself? No. I'm not either. I'm really not. And, uh. I, I do believe it's counterproductive, but we all know people that do. Everybody has that person, though, that does, you know, oh, oh, absolutely. Oh, always me. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, you know, you could hang them with a brand new rope and it wouldn't be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the advice here is that if you are prone to feeling sorry for yourself and when the going gets rough, Train your brain to exchange self-pity for gratitude. Be grateful. Find something in your life to be grateful for. Perfect. You know, or I tell you what, we had a basketball coach here once, and he wasn't necessarily my favorite because he was very ultra-religious, but one day we went to practice, and uh, you know the story I'm talking about? Um, Barry Henson. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, he's story. now a coach someplace else. He went in, and the guys were all like, we lost the ball game, we can't play ball. And, and he loads them up, and he takes them to the burn unit at the hospital. Uh, there you go. And you know what? They didn't have another day like that, and the rest of the season was a winning season. Wow. Good and, coach. And, uh, this kind of reminded me of that. So, um, yeah, I, I always talking. tend to look at the positive in everything negative. Try to figure it out. Sometimes it's oh, two years is. down the road, but whatever. There yeah. is, you know, and um, that's a good thing because, like I always say, you cannot see light if there's darkness. Right. You don't know if you have something good if you haven't seen something bad. Exactly. I mean, because it takes the yin and the yang to, um, you know... Well, Let you know. Visit, you gotta know. You gotta visit hell before you know where heaven's like. <laughs> and that's a song yeah. by the other Mount Daredevil. If you want to get to heaven, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we got to mention that. Okay, number two, give away their power. They don't give away their power. Hmm. Okay. And one thing she says is, "My mother-in-law makes me feel bad about myself." 
Well, you can't let your mother-in-law let make you feel bad about yourself. Right. First of all, that kind of goes into the self-pity kind of thing. You know, if our mother-in-law makes me feel bad, then I get to drown in self-pity. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you don't give away your power, you know? Sure. Um, if a, a co-worker makes you feel bad about you, then you've given them that power to do so. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Just stay away from them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't have to be best friends with every one of your co-workers. You just got to be able to work with them. You don't have to have go have drinks with them. That's right. Well, I kind of tend to do the opposite. Uh, if somebody insults me, I'll, I'll stand my ground and, and let them get it all out. And once they're all done, I just say, okay, are you done yet? Do you feel better? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we know that when people do that, it's about their own stuff. Yeah, it, it's, it's not about stuff. you. Know, right. Yeah. Right. So um, here's one that I think uh, the hammer will have some stuff to say about because COVID-19 changed a lot about um, how he deals with things at work. But don't shy away from change. <laughs> this is someone that's so EOC that uh, he did the same routine for and lived in waste for almost 40 years. So, but I'm not OC. I'm talking about that clutter in your office. Oh, that yeah. personal I mean, thing he had that all everybody this enjoyed. Stuff. <laughs> well, no. You got the change was very hard for me to. Um, Embrace, but the COVID nineteen um, having to do it, having to do it when you're forced to do it, you kind of find out it's not so bad, right? And you also find out that you can do it and you won't die. Yeah, yeah. And you can do it, and you know the world doesn't end two minutes after you change something. Yep. And that's very hard for a lot of people to do, especially as we get older and we've been doing things the same way for so long. But, you know, now to survive, we're going to have to change because the world is changing so quickly. And with this virus, with other things, if you don't change, you're going to get lost in the, in the shuffle and they're just going to run over you and survival. You've got to survive. Change is, is survival. I think a lot of people fear the unknown. That's why they don't like change. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Particularly people that are ADD. I, I, I know that. Um, I have a friend that talks about being ADD, and he says that, like, if I give him a book, I have to tell him the ending. <laughs> okay. Uh, because it makes him too nervous not to know. Oh, wow. And he's, he claims that is a symptom of his very serious ADD, um, which kind of goes along the lines of what you're talking about. So, um, yeah, uh, change is hard for a lot of people, um, but change is necessary. Right. And in light of COVID-19, I think we've all been rushed into change. And sure. we didn't really get to think about it. I mean, a lot of change in your life, you know, you you can think about it. Well, yeah, maybe I'll take that box of books out later, you know. And then you've you've got to sanitize your office between each customer. Well, it becomes unreasonable. Exactly. And so you have to do it. And then you realize you learned something about yourself that, you know, this really wasn't that bad. In fact, it might even have been a good thing. Yeah, you don't know. Don't fear yeah, the unknown. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next. Waste energy on things they can't control. Do not waste energy on things you can't control. I mean, to a certain extent, I don't know, everything goes back to COVID-19. There are things about this virus we cannot change. We've got to learn to cope despite COVID-19. Absolutely. Like many other things in our life, you know? Um, if you can't make a choice on how, let's say, one of your kids behaves, you can give them guidelines. You can raise them in a way that you hope they will make the right decisions. But at the end of the day, 
you can't control what they do as adults. Right. And I think there are a lot of situations like that. I mean, you, you can't control. I mean, even when the hammer house customer comes in, he can't control the fact that they paid too much for the last car. Right. And they can't get out of this. I mean, there's certain things you can't control, right? Well, there's lots of things, yeah, that are uncontrollable. And, and uh, you know, we, we have to learn to cope with these ever-changing things and that's going to be a new part of society where you could kind of blow it off now you can't you know you've got to decide how you're going to go shop are you going to wear the mask and the gloves and everything and then you know are you even going to take your clothes off in the garage before you go in the house I mean, there's lots of things you, you have to decide how you're going to handle it yeah. I use the word next. I imagine all my problems up above my head in a cloud, and I take one thing down at a time, and I ask myself, can I control that? And if I can't, I just toss it out and go next and go on to my next problem. That's a very good tip. I so, like that. So the like next. That. Yeah. Yes. Rem- remember the word next. And if you're like me, you will never run out of a next. <laughs> that's, that, that's true. That was taught to me by my recce master in Australia. Hi, Roscoe. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> okay, it says don't worry about pleasing others, which I agree with, but I also think that you need to be a good enough person that people will be glad that they ran into you every day. Yeah, I mean, I agree. for example, you make them feel better than if they had not seen you. Could be a but simple compliment. Exactly. You don't have to worry about pleasing them. Just make their day better. Right. You know, and and I you're agree. right. A simple compliment, a smile, um, you know, what up? Exactly. Um, I don't know if I would say I don't care what people think, but... I don't know. Well, you don't want to think you're a crabby Appleton. No, and that. <laughs> you just got it. But, you know, a nice, sometimes a smile and a nod of the head to even a stranger can make their day. It can make their day, you know? Exactly. And, um, and I think it's also a place where if you, we say, oh, we're, we're not worried about pleasing others, I think that's a lot of place where these um, microaggressions come out. Right. So it just it just be kind to everybody, you know, and make their day. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Exactly. The old golden rule. Exactly. And uh, if you got somebody that's too picky, just you know, don't be next. around. <laughs> next. <laughs> next. Okay. Next. Fear taking calculated risks. You know, you you need to take risks in your life. I mean, I I don't know. I'm kind of beyond the big risk taking age. <laughs> You know, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, uh, but when you're younger, you have to. Yeah, absolutely. You have to take some risks and, uh, you know, I mean, to say you're not going to be fearful, I think, is, I think you have to do it in spite of your fear um, because you're going to be afraid. And to say that you're not going to be at all afraid, I think is a little silly, but there's a certain amount of people, I guess, that... Um, do have uh, the ability to erase fear. Clearly they do. Well, you know, let's face it, especially in the job market, there are lots of people that don't take a different job or don't take an advancement or something just because they're afraid or they're afraid to take the risk and it haunts them the rest of their life, you know. You don't know if it would have worked out, but if you never, ever take that risk, you're never going to advance. You're never going to maybe find something new. Maybe that leads you to on a different path. Who knows? It's always the, the status quo is always safest. I've but had to, I've had to fire. Gonna, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, but you're always going to get what you always got, which is pretty boring. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, fired a few people that have thanked me for firing them because yeah. they hated their job, which was, you know, showing in their job performance. That's why I was firing them. But they just would not quit it. 
So when I finally fired them, they were like, oh, I'm free. Hallelujah. Thank you. Bye bye. No. Well, yeah. you're closing a door, a new door opens, right? Right. But you have to close that damn door. Okay? Mm-hmm. You, it's just like them sitting there at the job they hated and they're going nowhere in. They're not going anywhere else because they're not shutting that door. Exactly. You so can't sometimes leave that you need door a push. Cracked. Yeah, yes, you do. do. That's exactly true. A push. Yes. For sure. Good way of putting it. Okay, dwell in the past. Okay, I don't, I don't, I think you have to learn from the past. Exactly, I agree um, there. You don't want to, but don't also, dwell on she, it. Yeah, she also suggests you make peace with the past so you can live for the present. Yeah. And, and I like that statement. In fact, I'm, I'm going to take that away from a start, Nicole. Make peace with the past. Right. There you go. So you can move on. Yes. Um, a lot of times there's a lot of people that. It's very hard to move on from the past. Uh, you you think it was a good time in your life, or you think that it was fun when you were twenty five ish, let's say. But you know, you've got to shut that door. You do. You've got to move on and say, "Yeah, that was great." Okay. Next. Next. There you go. There, there you, you go. go. Right. No, we're loving that word, aren't we? Okay, don't make the same mistakes over and over again. I mean, that seems to go without saying. I mean, uh, if you can't learn from your mistakes, then I don't know. (laughs) I really don't know what to say about you, but uh, we do sometimes make mistakes over and over again. It, It is ridiculous. It is the definition of insanity, according to Einstein. Um, and I agree. I mean, for crying out loud, um, you know, I, I used to, I don't know, I think we used to say something about, you know, damn me once, damn me twice, but a third time. and Yeah. What was that? Uh, oh, damn you once, damn, damn you twice, twice, but damn me if it's a third time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. You know, that's, a, that's just true. You, Gosh, we're, we're supposed to be halfway intelligent and we should learn from our mistakes. Gosh, it's easy to um, not see them, but if someone certainly points them out, which someone usually does, say, you've done that before. Don't you think you ought to move on and say, that's all right, that's two, that, that, it's me. Yeah. And I think that's the hardest thing to admit is that it's actually us making the mistake. For the first time, maybe it's easy to blame on something else. You know, I was young, I was blah, blah, blah. You could come up with nine million excuses. The second time, you almost got to look within and say, you know what, this one's on me. Absolutely, (laughs) absolutely. Okay, Um, number nine is one that really just disturbs me about people. Do not resent other people's success. I mean, why in the world would you waste time on that? Yeah, I I don't get that at all. Be happy for that person. Absolutely. I want all of us to do well. And I I really, now I like successful people. I like to know what they did. I, I want to know how they got there. Not do I want to waste time going, I wish you didn't. That's just silly. That is ridiculous, and there are people that do it all the time, and it is crazy. True. I think well. Okay, number 10, give up after failure. That's really easy to do. When you fail, you feel embarrassed and discouraged. Sometimes you feel defeated. Right. But you have to pick up and go on. Yeah, I think people that have to audition for their work like dancers or musicians or whatever i think you know actors and actresses that that's number one you're not going to survive if you don't go on because that one role that one job is not worth a lifetime of worry so exactly exactly and um you know one two days three weeks three years down the road it is, it is going to be meaningless. Exactly. And I think a lot of people that are in um, mental health pro- trouble, 
need to remember that what seems like such a tragedy today, you know, a day, three weeks, three years down the road will be nothing. Right. And it's also, it's also easy just to, you know, like in my business, I'm told no millions of times. And, and, but that didn't sometimes mean no. Mm -hmm. But also, you've got to look at it that sometimes it's just like you were talking about musicians or dancers or it's business. Yeah, it is business. It, it's not sometimes personal. you don't know People what they're looking for. for. Yeah. Right. And, and, and it's, it, it's tough sometimes to look past the personal part of it, but you just have to get to where it's not personal, it's not you. Well, and That's you don't know you. what the agenda is of the person. You don't choosing. know the whole thing. You know, sometimes you're you're standing there and you're a five foot ten white woman, and they actually want a five foot seven black woman. I mean, you don't know what their agenda is. Right. It, it's not necessarily, and and it doesn't mean their agenda is bad. It just means you don't fit the profile. Yeah, I think but they could they're take, not exactly telling you that. They could take a lesson from salespeople because for every yes a salesperson hears, there's probably nine no's minimum. Exactly, exactly. At least and there's probably some great statistics out there for that. But I, I bet you are exactly right. Okay, don't fear alone time. I I I I just didn't even relate to this because I don't fear alone time or have, but um, I, I fear being alone and old, right. but I don't feel fear being alone for some time. Right. So uh, maybe one of you guys can, you know. All I know is being, being an only child, you grow up being alone. Do you hate it though? I no, mean, no, does it you make learn, you like being alone? Learn I don't learn to, know. It's just like anything. You learn to cope with it. Yeah. I uh, agree. You know, you just have to, that's just part of, I'm going to say this, and probably some people won't like it, but as usual, I say what I think. If you don't like yourself, you're going to hate a long time. Right. There you go. Yeah. If, right. if, yeah. if you yeah. like yourself, hey, I'm with me. Hey, I'm a pretty good guy. I can have some fun. I can do this. I can do that. I can make stuff happen, you know? All right. If, I don't get it, but I know there are some people that we have people at work, if they're not talking to somebody or if they're not standing around another, quote, group or other individuals, you would think that the world is going to end. <laughs> they, they, are not, they, are, they are very uncomfortable if someone, if they're not around someone. Ooh, it's weird. Number twelve, don't fear that. Uh, don't feel that the world owes you anything. Right. I mean, that's really, you know, that's a millennial life thing. Was, nobody, yeah, it <laughs> yeah. is for sure. And and nobody said life was fair, and life is not, not necessarily fair. Right. Yeah. Okay, but you've got to make your life in spite of. You know, the turmoil. The, the Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Across. Yeah, don't feel sorry for yourself. That's just so unproductive. Okay, don't expect immediate results. It takes time. You know, first of all, most anything you do, you're dealing with people. Right. And people can be thick, carriage, stubborn, and very hard to deal with. It takes them, you know, a very long time for you to get through to them. You know, whether it's a sale, whether it, whatever it is, you're convincing somebody. Yeah. Right. Um, you're dealing with people and people can be stubborn. Your timeline is not the only timeline. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, and that kind of goes on with the previous one. Well, I just realized when. that these are basically 13 things that entrepreneurs don't do. Because exactly. This is uh, great entrepreneurial advice. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. So, um, in light of the fact that um, people are home and people are having overwhelming feelings about the coronavirus, they're scared to death. A lot of people are scared to death. There are also people that, like we were talking about, they're losing their jobs. 
Right. There's companies that are closing down. There are also people at home that, um, you know, have bad relationships. They don't have money to feed their kids. Um, we're, we're seeing a spike in domestic um, issues. So we thought we would go over um, Jade Wu's eight strategies to manage overwhelming feelings. And we'll, we'll go over those pretty quickly. But, um, she says, ground yourself in the present. And she has a technique that I really thought was awesome. It's called 54321. Hmm. You start out with five. Look around and name, when you feel overwhelmed, name five things you can see, whatever it is in the room. A picture, I see a doodle in a cage. You just name five things, okay? Okay. So what you're doing is you're distracting your mind. All right. Okay? Listen and name four things you can hear. You can hear a bird chirping outside. You hear the screech of the chair. You hear whatever it is you hear. Name four things. Three, notice three things that you can touch, okay? You feel you feel your feet touch the cold floor, okay? You, you feel, can feel like right now I can touch my desk, the hard desk. Okay. And I think about how it feels. Is it textured? Is it cold? Is it warm? Okay, next comes two smells. You know, if there's a candle close to you or, you know, paper has a smell, you know, things have smells. You know, I've got a little thing of paint here. I guess I could sniff that. <laughs> well, uh, speaking, speaking, of, speaking of smell, I have a question. Are we all showering yet or are we still just washing our hands? <laughs> That's a good one. We have graduated to shower. So, we have. <laughs> okay, and one, find something that you can taste, even if it's cold water. Booze. Booze. Yeah, booze. Yeah, booze. Whatever just say it that. is. There you go. Okay. This will distract your mind. Okay. Um, I, I just found this today. I mean, I'm going to try it because sometimes I think of things I really don't want to. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Okay. Um, next, clean up your immediate surroundings. We talked about this last week, I think. We talked about don't marry a pig. You know, <laughs> well, know if they're a pig. I mean, just keep yeah. things straightened up. You don't have to be, you know, like my mother cleaned everything excessively. And don't get like that. Don't act like the French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I couldn't resist. Oh I'm God. just kidding. Okay. Or am I? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. Anyway, <laughs> uh, ruthless, ruthlessly prioritize. Okay. If you've got a list and you're not going to get everything done, prioritize. The hammer and I make out a card, a list every day. We know we're not going to get the whole thing done. Right. But it's there and we just move. Okay, what do we didn't get done today? Okay, we move it to the next day. Exactly. We right. make that out on a little index card every day. And you know that sounds really stupid, but gosh, it's really worked well. It you really feel like you accomplished work. some things. So what if you only got two out of eight? Yeah. Right. That's, if at least you know most, you got two. If they yeah. were the most important thing. Then, exactly. Okay. Mountains weren't moved in a day. No. That's exactly There's right. There's always tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you hope so, right? Um, yeah, sleep towards your head towards the east. Set of says so that there's tomorrow, but yeah. that's another story for another day. Anyway, number four, stop accidentally multitasking. I think we're this is speaking to people with ADD where you start something or or old people, you know, like I go into a room and I'm I'm going there to um, you know get an envelope and I start making the bed. You know, yeah, I, I you I, know what I mean? You just I'm do bad that. for that. Yeah. yeah um yes, um, stop Doing the way it. to screw up two jobs. That's exactly right. <laughs> or two tasks, I do it or whatever, all the time. And to just mess up both. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I went the other day three times. I walked upstairs to get the same thing. You know that's terrible. So, yeah. okay, take the next tiny step. When you feel frozen, um, you know, just take a step towards getting a task done that you direct. Right. You know. Um, if there's a phone call you need to make, you know, 
So at least look up the number. Make a little card. You know, work your way up to it. Okay. Good advice. Follow your impulses. Okay? When you're working on something that's you're getting distracted and you're not doing a good job, move on to something else, come back. Right. Yeah. Hip hip for right. Yeah, and and then this goes along with um the list we talked about. Re rethink your to do list, you know? If it's making you overwhelmed, take some crap off. Right. You know, like I said, the hammer and I, we really like the to-do list. You know, and it also feels like we're planning, and uh, it feels like we're taking, yeah. we're both taking part in in home. Right. You're accomplishing something. You're moving forward. Exactly. Plus, also together. Exactly. There you go. It wasn't that uh, Grace decided it, or I decided it. It's we decided it absolutely and that way we sometimes decide not to do this job yeah, yeah we know okay <laughs> do you, you want to do this could, no we do you could want to have no. happy hour or we could go uh, we could you know clean up the bathroom well i can pretty much tell you what we expect <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, this we talked about in um the last segment but Radically accept what you can't, cannot do, or control. Right. You know, we basically already talked about that. Next. So if you're getting overwhelmed, you know, go to these three, um, these eight items. But five, four, three, two, one. Really, I thought that was that's great. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Anyway, um, we have a little affirmation. Um, I think that affirmations are. A great way to start the day out positively or end the day. Um, and um, I, I think we've had a really good show here today. I'd like to thank you all. Yep. Um, we are messengers in love, happy, healthy, financially prosperous, great partners, and parents. We are charitable, energetic, creative trendsetters that experience success every day. Here, Sometimes here. if you say something like this every day, it sort yeah. of becomes true, right? It sure does. It reminds me of that, that little girl in front of the mirror that uh, pumps herself up, that little video. Um, I don't know yeah. if you've ever seen it, but it's so cute. She tells yeah. herself how beautiful she is, and she goes on and on. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank Just you very much, you guys. Get the mojo pointing in the right direction. Right. Yeah, move yeah. that coffee table. Move that coffee yeah, table. Yeah, move that damn table. coffee table. You can also get the dog hair that was underneath the coffee table. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> what did you get it? You know, you can actually get to it and you don't have to break your back. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you all next week. Bye now. <laughs>